afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Total Woman Wellness Show. I am your host, Elena K. Watkins, and we are preparing for another exciting episode. Today, we will be talking with Amethisha Clark, who is a survivor and overcomer of myasthenia gravis. I'm going to be bringing her on to the show here shortly, but of course, I have a few announcements that I want to make, and let me just tell you, there's special announcements. And why are they special? Because I need your help. I need your assistance with two campaigns that I am a part of that it has really has nothing to do with me, although I am involved. These are efforts to reach young women and girls in the community for mentorship, to be a part of the stiletto Women Business Owner Symposium that's coming here in April that I have been sharing with you guys about for the last couple of months. And like I said, it occurs on April the 10th. And what I need you to do is even if you had uh, plan on coming to the symposium, if you don't plan on coming but yet you want to support our next generation of young girls and women, encourage them to either um, go into business and or just through life in general, it basically is just kind of putting them on a path to success through mentorship. And I know I have some listeners out there who really either do this through their organization or it's something that they would definitely step up to support. So what I need you to do is go to Indiegogo, and that's I-N-D-I-E-G-O-G-O.com, and then in the search bar, just put in Inspire young girls, and women through mentorship. And it will bring up our page under education, Stepping Up to Inspire. And it's the whole campaign, uh, and you even receive perks for your donation. No donation is too small to get accomplished what we want to accomplish here in the um, DMV area for the symposium. And, again, as I've said before, it is really my honor to be a co-ambassador of this event because the last place at the um, Stiletto Women Business Chicago, and that was last year, and it was very, very successful, and I know that we can make it a success here in this area as well. So, uh, as I said before, this is just one part of the campaign where, again, you can inspire and help mentor young girls through the Indiegogo campaign. Uh, we're also you're going to see more about the event in one of our sponsors, our media sponsors, Her Life Magazine. will be doing a nice uh, write up about uh, both the symposium as well as the campaign to talk about how through this campaign we can inspire young girls and women through mentorship. So I really, really appreciate you all going and taking a look at that campaign and again doing what you can, sharing it with your network, sharing it with your uh, girlfriends who also may feel compelled to uh, help us with the campaign. So that's that for the Stiletto Women Business Owners. You all know how I get when I'm very passionate about something, and I am very passionate about um, this event. Um, Secondly, our network, our lovely May We Help You Radio network, we are going, we are growing as well, and we need your help so that we can expand our network, our listenership, and we do that through, again, having people share what we do. And so we need for you to follow us on Spreaker. It's S-P-R-E-A-K-E-R, and we're at M-W-H-Y Radio. So if you could follow us on Spreaker, that would help us to get our listenership up and help us to, again, get on iHeart Radio. Wouldn't you just be able to enjoy that where you can just kind of tune into iHeart Radio? And here at Wednesdays at noon, your favorite show, the Total Woman Wellness Show, of course you would. So it will only take a second. And if you don't have a profile on Spreaker, you can just create a profile and then follow us. And, again, it's another way to really just listen to podcasts and to listen to other shows as well uh, while you're on Spreaker. So I appreciate all of you uh, if you could help me out with both of those campaigns. And then lastly, as far as my announcements, um, you, again, we're still in February for Heart Health Month. There is a day event that we're hosting here, or that I'm not hosting, I'm sorry, but that I am participating in as one of the um, speakers, and it's the um, Heart Health Day Party, and it's going to be at the Erie Cafe 
and um, it's a benefit. So you can get tickets for that on Eventbrite. Just put in women heart health benefit dot eventbrite dot com to purchase your tickets, and it's going to be this Saturday from one p.m. to five p.m. Another radio host. Cherie Cofield will also be there, and then we also have our wellologist, Candice Camille. So the three of us are going to be speakers at this Women's Day um, Heart Health event and just wear some piece of red, wear all red, come out and show your support. Again, you know, I've been using the hashtag love your heart, and so we're going to just kind of have fun and be able to love your heart and celebrate and show you all what it really means to uh Watch out for the signs and symptoms of heart health, what to do should you feel uh, these signs and symptoms, how we can take preventive measures, and things that you can do today and then for the remainder of, you know, of your life to get on a path to um, having heart health. So that's it as far as my announcements are concerned. You know, there goes the excitement building again. If you are listening in and you have a question or a comment, that you would like to speak to myself or to my guest as I introduced her, you can do so by dialing 646-652-2512 and then just press the number one and we will know that there is a listener in the queue who has a question or a comment for us. So we would like for you to interact with us. Today we also have a great hashtag ask the nurse question that I'll be sharing later in the segment as well as our coach B Fit and giving us our fit tip of the week, and that's going to be Belinda Johnson, Coach B Fit. So we'll have a fitness tip from her later on as well. So without further delay, let me bring in Amasisha. She is a certified holistic health coach. She practiced corporate law for eight years before deciding to become a holistic health coach. And you want to know why? It was after she overcame Myasthenia gravis, which is a rare autoimmune disease, and she did this by overcoming the disease through clean eating, reducing her environmental toxins, and reducing her stress. And we're going to talk about all of this on the show today. She's passionate about educating other women about healthy nutrition, healthy living, and how they can support their body's natural ability to heal. She received her training from the Institution for Integrative Nutrition in New York City, also an alumna of Cornell University and Cornell Law School. Let me just tell you, I am honored to bring her on to the show today. I had the opportunity to meet uh, Amethystia in person um, at a conference in November in D.C., and she shared her story with me, and I said to her, we've got to get you on the show. So without further delay, let me bring Emma Cicia on to the show. How are you? And thank you for taking time out and welcome to the Total Woman Wellness Show. Thanks so much, Delaine. I'm really excited to be on the show. Thank you. Yeah, so am I. And you know what? It seems like it was many, many, many months ago, but I know it was only just a few short months ago that we met and that you shared your story with me. And I said, you know, I definitely want to have you on the show to just share because, you know, sometimes it's one thing to read about, um, you know, someone being diagnosed with a disease and, you know, sort of how they may have overcame the disease or um, what they're going through now, you read about that. But it's truly a different level or a different aspect when someone is able to actually share with you their own words and their own journey about going through a life-altering illness, you know, especially something who that really kind of came on very sudden. So I wanted you to come on and share with the listeners really a little bit about you and then just kind of take us right into your story about being diagnosed with myasthenia gravis. Thanks, Elena. Uh, I think I'll just go in, into my story and uh, then we can uh, circle back into what I do now. So I, okay, 12 years ago, I was in my third year of law school. As you mentioned, I practiced law for a while, and life was great. I had a really good paying job lined up after law school at a prestigious law firm in New York City, and I was driving back to law school to take one of my finals. When all of a sudden, the two lanes in front of me, 
suddenly became four lanes. And the cars started bumping into each other. And there were cars above the road and below the road. And my heart started to race. But I was slowly able to drive to the next exit and wash my face. My vision cleared up. And then I got back on the road. And I kept wondering that maybe I had distorted vision because I had been sleep deprived from studying for finals all all week. Mm-hmm. And, but as my vision continued to be clear, I got calmer and calmer. But then it happened again. Blurred double vision in the middle of rural Pennsylvania on a lonely highway going at 60 miles an hour. My heart was wow. pounding harder than I've ever felt it pound before. And I prayed I drank water, I yawned, I blinked, but nothing helped. In the midst of my panic, I had to pull over to the side of the road and call 911. And then I later learned that those were the classic symptoms of myasthenia gravis. As you mentioned, it's a rare autoimmune disease that causes muscle weakness throughout the body, not just in the eyes where it can cause blurred and double vision, but also in the the face where it can have people have difficulty chewing and swallowing, weakness in the arms and legs, and even weakness in the lungs where it can be fatal. So that was my first experience with uh, myasthenia. Well, and, you know, as I'm listening to you share your first experience, it really sounds like, you know, again, it's um, sort of what you would call um, not really a glaring symptom, so to speak, because, again, you had blurred double vision, and the first thing you did was what? You related it to being exhausted, you know, kind of studying a lot and all of that, which makes sense, right? So, again, when I right. look at um, the symptoms or and or look at what you first initially experienced, that probably happens to, let's say, maybe one in five people, you know, on a daily basis, again, because we're all – you know, kind of sometimes burning the candle at both ends, you know, all too often, you know, we do it, I'm doing it right now. <laughs> so, you know, if that were to happen to me, the first thing that I would say is, you know, oh my gosh, you know, I've got to get more sleep or oh my goodness, you know, I'm doing too much. And that's the first thing that you would automatically, you know, in your mind think to, and it makes sense, right? So right away, you're not um, concerned, you're not thinking that there's anything going on with your body that's going to ultimately you know, lead to a diagnosis that will shift things for you. So once you did that, then tell us kind of what happened after that. Was there anything that then began to worsen the symptoms or characterize it to be a little bit more difficult for you after having the incident of the the blurred double vision? Because, again, you know, like I said, that's something that can kind of be, you know, common, um, if you will, and or in your mind, like you said, you weren't thinking, you know, that this really could be something more than than that. So tell us what happened sort of after that, even though I know that that was your first initial, you know, um, I guess uh, exposure to the illness. So what was there anything yeah, particular that so, happened after that? Well, it, it kept happening. You know, when it first happened that first time on the road, I thought, oh, maybe I'm tired. But then it, it kept happening. It happened actually two more times on the road. And then when I got to the hospital, it just kept happening. So I knew there was something wrong. I thought it it was Mm -hmm. my eyes. So at first I went to, you know, an eye, an ophthalmologist to figure out, and I I got some diagnosis from there. It was pretty scary also to keep getting misdiagnosed. I either got a misdiagnosis or no diagnosis. Um, But finally, I my cousin actually is she's a pediatrician, but she remembered my senior gravis from law school. This actually happened about a few days before Christmas. So at Christmas she said, You know, that that sounds like my senior gravis and um and then that's eventually how I got diagnosed. But many people with autoimmune diseases, it takes them so long to be diagnosed because some of these symptoms, like you said, can be vague, the fatigue the blurred vision and double right. vision is kind of special, though, um, especially if it, it keeps happening. 
But exactly, and that's what I was trying to say. Right, and that's the reason why I was pointing it out like that, um, just for your listeners, um, for the listeners out there, just so you'll understand the reason why I was kind of having her tell the story like that and wanting her to share it in that fashion is because, again, oftentimes we will do exactly what just happened. You know, I always talk about that, how we will have a symptom, experience it, and then we will oftentimes either refer to it or explain it away based upon what's going on currently Mm -hmm. in our lives. And sometimes that can very well be the case. But in this case, I'm, you know, um, just pointing it out because it is a very vague symptom. And and the statistic that I was sharing, of course, was one that I just kind of um, hypothetically said one in five, but truly the the blurred or double vision is medically um, called diplopia, and that's something that Mm -hmm. can occur on a number of different things. And so my point in saying it that way is if you notice that something has occurred and then you can't really relate it to a particular um, illness or the symptom really doesn't point back to anything, you have to be persistent in what you know is going on with your body. And because this Mm -hmm. happened once and then it occurred again, she was able to say, okay, I need to go to – since it's the eyes, let me go to an ophthalmologist and find out if it's something going on with just my vision. And it may not be systemic, but you have to be persistent in when you're talking about, you know, your health and your body as a whole. And I always share by saying one symptom, one sign can either be a symptom, can be um, a combination or a cluster of one thing going on with you, or it could just be a single symptom of something going on with you. So in other words, if it occurs more than once, that means your body is trying to tell you something. If it occurs mm-hmm. along with other symptoms, then most definitely there's something going on. And so in this case, that's why I wanted for you to share the way that it happened with you because, again, it was I would have explained the same thing. I would have thought, okay, I'm driving home, it's late, you know, did the same thing, turned the radio up, put the window down, put the air conditioner on, you know, that kind right. of thing what's really going on with me, even probably shook my head a little bit, and, you know, kind of right. closed my eyes and shook my head and said, okay, cl- clear this up. You know how you kind of go back and forth, you like, talk you to know, yourself. You're shaking yeah. your head, like, mm-hmm. okay, exactly. You talk to yourself, like, okay, eyes, you know, clear up. So I'm sure that, you know, as I'm listening to you, and I'm sure other people that are out there listening would have done the same thing. Now, how long between that incident and your actual diagnosis of the myasthenia gravis. How much time had between that night driving um, in Pennsylvania to get back to school between that, um, experiencing that, and then actually being diagnosed? How much time? It was, For me, it was pretty quick. It was only about three months, and that's because my cousin mentioned it. My doctor even dismissed her because she's not a neurologist. She's, she's a pediatrician. He said, oh, I don't think it's that, but let's, you know, check you for it. But it was only about three months, and I think it's because I came in with the diagnosis telling the doctor because I've heard so many people exactly. it's taking them years, you know, to be diagnosed. Yes. Mhm. And I was getting ready to say that's what the reason why, and I'm sure people are probably thinking, oh, she thinks three months is quick. Yes, it's quick because oftentimes with neurological diseases and autoimmune disease, it does take some time, especially if, you know, again, because these symptoms can be very um, vague, and, again, they may come on, Mm -hmm. um, you know, um, in such a way that if you don't have a definitive diagnosis, because it is rare, number one, let me just, you know, make that um, distinction because it's rare. And then also if you're not being sent to a specialist, which a neurologist is, someone who may think like what your um, family member thought, oh, it could be this. If you had not gone in and said, okay, can you, you know, do the testing for this? Do you think it's that? Can you send me to a specialist for that? That may have not ever come up, you know, for your physician unless, again, the symptoms continued and then eventually they do what you call um, to rule out. So they'll do tests to rule out specific Mm -hmm. things. And oftentimes the autoimmune diseases don't always pop up there, you know, um, as far as diagnosis. So that's why it's so important for you to share for you to continue to make sure that you notify, you know, your physician with symptoms, especially if they're occurring regularly um, or in clusters. Is there anything else that you can share about that particular um, time frame during the three months? 
Uh, during well, during the three months, it was. I mean, the my thing affected my life. It it really came off for me suddenly. So it affected my driving. Uh, I couldn't even drive to the supermarket. I couldn't drive to church. I really lost my independence. And I couldn't dial the phone number. I remember trying to dial a seven, and I dialed four because my vision was blurred and and not lining up. And even crossing the street was difficult for me. So it affected every area of my life. Um, and it, wow. you know, it was a little depressing. Oh, I, I imagine. I was just getting ready to say, and you, you sounded like you were in the midst of school as well, in the midst of law school. Oh, yeah. For driving back to take the final. So, you know, I'm sure it affected all of that if you were having difficulty with, you know, with your vision and, you know, oh, my goodness. Yeah, I actually had to have um, accommodations for my final. That particular final, they I think they gave me some extra time and, uh, I could use an eye patch and, and whatnot, and eventually I was studying for the bar coming up. I had to get accommodations on the bar exam as well to get larger print and um, wow. some extra time and whatnot. So, yeah, it definitely affected life a lot, and I had to really lean on right. my family members and whatnot. Absolutely. Okay, well, listen, thank you so much for sharing that part of your story Now, when we come back from commercial break, we're going to delve right into how she overcame being diagnosed with myasthenia gravis. We're going to talk about the journey of encouraging healthy living, becoming toxic-free, as well as clean living. So we're going to delve into all of that good stuff and see what kind of turns that take, you know, because that is not only for autoimmune diseases, but I think most certainly that it will help us in our journey to healthier living, period. So, but I wanted to have this to really be a segue into that because she's going to share with us how um, she overcame it using those methods and how, Part of what I introduced her, healthy living and how they can support their body's natural ability to heal is what she has in her bio. So that is the turn that we're going to take when we come back from commercial break. Get ready because we're going to be about that squat life during our commercial breaks this um, week. The first commercial break is going to be squats, just regular squats. You're going to do 10 Two sets of 10. So two sets of 10 squats. That's a total of 20 between now and the time that we come back from commercial break. And then when we come back from commercial break, we will have our fit tip from Coach B Fit. This is Capri Smith, your uncuffed living expert. I want to take a moment and speak to my women entrepreneurs. If you have your own business card in the name of your business, but you struggle when someone asks what it is you do, that is a problem. If you are not making money that's going to build your legacy and sustain your family, that is a problem. I invite you to hop on over to caprismith.com Join my free newsletter, and while you're there, schedule your strategy session. I want to help you uncover some things that you should already know. I spent 20 years perfecting my craft, and I'm willing to share all of what I know with you today. If you're not living uncuffed, you're just not living. And if you're cuffed in your business, your clients will know that, and they won't invest in you. So let's connect. Until next time, have an awesome day. This is Tanya Free. Chicago Mayor Rahm Emanuel plans to honor the Jackie Robinson West Low League players after they lost their national title over violations of geographic boundary rules. The players were stripped of the title they won last summer because team officials were found to have violated a rule setting geographic boundaries within which teams must find their players. What's your take? How do you feel about the decision of Little League International to strip the Jackie Robinson West team of this title? The Tanya Free and Friends Talk Show, your destination for the best in social and political straight talk. Wednesdays at 2 p.m., streaming live on TanyaFree.com and BlackTalkRadioNetwork.com. Join the conversation Wednesdays at 2 p.m. 
If you're the parent of a child with behavioral challenges that has been suspended, expelled, or just not able to make it in a traditional school setting, there is an alternative. Call the Metropolitan Day School today. Licensed and accredited grades K-12, through call 804-321-2595. Financial assistance and after-school programs are available. Let's turn this school year around right now at the Metropolitan Day School where Eagles soar. Call Ms. Thomas today, 804-321-2595. Poppy Black, coming through to bring you the latest in sports, celebrity, and entertainment news. Here's the sip this week. So, we don't know what's going to happen with RG3 and the Redskins this season, but we do know that he and his wife are expecting the baby. Congrats to them, and maybe the success will carry on to the team. In other news, James Winston will be playing a waiting game to see which team is willing to pick him up with all his drama. And Vivica Fox wants us all to know that 50 Cent was the love of her life. If you ask me, somebody caught her on Valentine's Day after a few glasses of wine. Lastly, Kanye wants us to know something about his daughter. North has been throwing tantrums throughout New York Fashion Week because others hate her daddy. I disagree. I think that little girl is just over the lights of cameras, unlike her parents. Let that little girl be great and be at home. I'm just saying. Check out more on my site, thesipwithcoffeeblack.com, and tune in next week to The Sip with Coffee Black. No sugar, no cream. Hello, and welcome back to the Total Woman Wealth Show. I am your host, Delena K. Watkins, and we are talking about myasthenia gravis, a rare autoimmune disease, with our special guest, Amnesthesia Clark, today. And not only are we talking about that, but when I bring her back on, we're going to be talking about clean living and lowering our exposure to toxin, toxins and mind-body healing. So if you are listening in and you have a question, you can just press number one. If you're listening to us online and you would like to come on to the show to ask a question or to just give a comment, you can do so by dialing 646-652-2512 and then press the number one. Or if you just want to stay on social media and you have a question, you can do so and use the hashtag AskTheNurse. Now it's time for us to have our fitness correspondent, Belinda, Coach B. Fit Johnson, who's going to come on because, you know, I like to bring her on after we do our Physically Fit commercial break because I like to impress her to let her know that all of our listeners are getting physically fit. So how about that, Coach B. Fit? How are you? I'm good. How are you? <laughs> I'm doing great. What you got for us this week on our Fit okay. Tip? Well, I wanted to talk a little about the importance of strength training. Uh, because we're talking about preventive measures. And one of the things that you can do to prevent uh, several different things going on in your body, one being osteoporosis, is uh, including strength training in your fitness regimen. That is so important, Mm -hmm. especially if you are on a weight loss journey. That is very important because you have to build muscle in order to continue to burn fat in your body. So strength training is very important. Please include it in your fitness regimen. Cardio, cardio, cardio is not the perfect regimen for everybody. It is a good part of your regimen, but adding strength training movements in in your regimen helps out a whole lot. It's an excellent, excellent implementation to do. So weight training is number one uh, when it comes to Uh, being on a good weight loss journey. If you want to experience quick weight loss, adding strength training is very important. And you can, there are so many um, different types of exercises you can do when it comes to working all your groups of muscles, upper body and lower body. You can Google it or you can always come to yours truly, Coach B. Fit, who is uh, more than able to help you and will be glad to help you on your health and fitness journey. So strength training is very important and it can also help eliminate certain things that go on in the body. Absolutely. And I'm glad that you talked about strength training today to really kind of clear it up. I know we've talked a little bit about it in the past, and I share with them during the Physically Fit commercial breaks just to add a little bit of weight to what you're currently doing. As you said, cardio is good. We love cardio, you know, again, as it's Heart Health Month, and cardio is one of the things that we talk about and promote for heart health. But strength training has its benefits as well. 
So exactly. definitely, again, if you don't know where to start, if you need some assistance with that, make sure that you look up uh, Coach B Fit, and I'm going to have her give her information. She's also here on the Total Women Wellness Show every other Wednesday sharing with us fit tips. But she can be available to you to help with, you know, getting you started and integrating strength training into your fitness journey. So, Coach B Fit, thank you so much. And please share with the listeners, again, how they can follow you, get more fit tips with Coach B Fit. Please follow me through all of my social media. I am Coach B Fit on all of the social media, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Or you can go straight to my website at www.coachbfit.com. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Let me correct that. www.iamcoachbfit.com. Because she is Coach B Fit. (laughs) 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 Thank you. Thank you so much. Your fit tips are always right on time. They're always awesome and, you know, such a great uh, addition, I guess, if you will, to not only our physically fit commercial breaks, but I think what we need every week or every other week when you're here sharing to kind of make sure we're going in the right direction as well as be sort of an adjunct to what we're currently doing. Even myself, sometimes, you know, when I'm doing cardio and a strength training and it's like, okay, I want to do more strength training than I want to do cardio, but they both have their importance and they're, you know, both very effective in uh, when you're on your health and fitness journey. So, again, thank you, Coach B Fit, always sharing great fit tips here on the Total Woman Wellness Show. Next, we're going to bring back in Amicia, who has been sharing with us her journey with Myasena Gravis. And now we're going to talk about how she overcame it. She shared with us how she was diagnosed, um, and again, really within three months, which is um, not only in itself rare because the the, uh, disease is one of those rare diseases and the, the symptoms that present are kind of vague. And so she thankfully was diagnosed very quickly and was able to get on Uh, the road to overcoming this disease. And that's the part that I want you to share with us now. So welcome back to the show, Amicia. Thanks, Delana. Um, So actually, let me me just share, you know, after the diagnosis, and then I'll I'll get to that turning point. Um, I was on pharmaceutical drugs, the drugs that suppress my immune system, for uh, about four years. And actually, despite being diagnosed, you're talking about you know, really paying attention and listening to your body. I always tell clients to listen to their body. I continued with my plans of working at a law firm, so I was working 80 to 100-hour weeks and taking these drugs that suppress my immune system. And they they worked for the most part. Sometimes I had blurred vision and I'd have to go on a steroid to correct that for a short period of time, but overall they worked. After about four years on the immunosuppressant drugs, the doctor put me on steroids. So I was on steroids for two years. And they worked as well. I I did gain weight. That's one of the side effects of taking prednisone, uh, the steroid. And he recommended that I have surgery. There's a surgery, the removal of the thymus gland, which plays a role in my seniors in your chest. It also plays a role in immunity in kids. And I had uh, my thymus removed. I kind of resisted that treatment for a while because it was only um, theoretically worked with people who had generalized myasthenia throughout the body. But anyway, I had the surgery, and after the surgery, my symptoms actually got worse. So instead of having blood Mm. vision intermittently, I had it 24-7. I wasn't on any drugs, but even prior to that, if I hadn't been on, on drugs, it was intermittent. But now I had it waking up in the morning, going to sleep at night, and I also remember being at work under uh, trying to do a deal, trying to draft a provision, and, and my fingers couldn't move on the keyboard. So I started having weakness in my hands. And my doctor recommended wow. that I go back on the steroid. And I told him I was worried about those long-term side effects, which are diabetes, glaucoma, osteoporosis. Those are a few of them. And I have a strong family history of osteoporosis and glaucoma. But he told me that because right. I was young, I was 31 at the time, 
and I was on. He said I was on a low dose that I didn't have to worry about those long-term side effects. So I went back on the steroid, and four months later, I was diagnosed with osteoporosis in the spine and hip when I was oh. 32. Yeah, so oh, he didn't tell goodness. me, as Coach B. Fit said, you know, do weight-bearing exercise. He didn't tell me any preventative measures. He didn't say take vitamin D, take calcium. He just said, you know, right. you're young. And I I didn't know any better, so I, I listened to him, and I went back on the steroid. So at that point, that was my turning point. I, I knew there had to be another way. I knew that I had to take control of my own health. And I went to a naturopathic doctor, and she put me on some natural supplements. She told me about changing my diet, so I went on an anti-inflammatory diet. I sought out other complementary healing methods like modalities like acupuncture, chiropractic care. I started doing yoga, meditation. I was juicing. I reduced my stress. Eventually I, I did quit my job because, you know, I wasn't sleeping. I was working a lot. So that's when I decided I had to take control of my health, and I think that that's a lot of us feel like we don't play a role, that we just need to take medication and have surgery, and we kind of take a back seat to doctors and pharmaceutical companies letting them you know, run our lives, but we need to be active participants in helping ourselves to heal. So actually that's when I, I was so... No, go go ahead, Delana. No, I was just saying absolutely I was agreeing with you um, on that point. So, yeah. Yeah, so I was really intrigued by the fact that I was getting better. Like, the, eventually I totally had no symptoms. Just from I got off the steroid, I was taking these bioflavonoids, um, which come from the, the white part of citrus fruit, doing all those other things that I mentioned, mm-hmm. and I I got better. So I was really intrigued by that. That's when I became a health coach, and then I eventually founded my company, a Clean Body Living, because I believe that we need to live clean in every area of our our lives. And we need to be uh, – Clean Body Living actually has five different principles. I'll just mention them, and then we can go into them. But awareness, we really need to be aware of what we're putting on, in, and around our bodies. And we need to become intimately aware of our bodies. That's tapping into our intuition, really listening to our bodies, which we um, were mentioning earlier, doing the body movement. And for people with autoimmune diseases, you might not be able to, you know, run that 10K or lift those heavy weights, but exercising to your ability. Some days you might be able to, but when you can't, listen to your body. Uh, Eating clean, eating food with minimal toxins, but also knowing what works for you. For people with autoimmune diseases, certain foods aren't really good for people with autoimmune diseases like dairy and gluten, but really kind of like knowing your disease and knowing what affects you. And then self-care, taking care of yourself, reducing your stress, being quiet, and then reducing the environmental toxins. So there are toxins, you know, all around us in our body products, plastics, cleaning products, et cetera. And I found that doing those things really helps people. It helped me. It's helped my clients to really take control of their health and improve their conditions. Absolutely. And you know what? Thank you for sharing that. And I was um, just kind of jotting down um, sort of your journey to begin, you know, kind of overcoming and just kind of what you went through. And it is what you went through is what most typical um, people go through when they're diagnosed. You know, first you're given a – once you actually receive a diagnosis that's definitive, then there's the pharmaceutical drugs naturally to try to counteract um, the autoimmune disease. Because um, just for those of you who don't understand really what autoimmune disease, I guess the the easiest lay – person's way without kind of getting medically um, kind of immersed into it and using a bunch of medical terms is it's like the body system that was designed to protect you sort of turns on itself. Like it doesn't recognize right. um, specific cells and things like that. So that's just a way for you to think of it is that your body is um, immune system, which is set up to protect you sort of turns against itself. And that's what an autoimmune mm-hmm. disease is. Okay, so for those of you out there who don't understand, and there's 
several different diseases that fall into that category. There's um, lupus, you know, um, there's um, multiple sclerosis. There's a couple yeah. of different, yeah, and yeah, and that's um, muscular dystrophy. So there's a lot that fall in that category. And uh-huh. I, you know, just listening to you talk about that and just what I call, you know, the, 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 um, the cat, the, uh, not the caveat, the cookie cutter, uh, response to it is naturally and not really cookie cutter in a negative fashion, but to say that generally when you're diagnosed, you know, in the medical field, um, I've seen where it's okay. We look at the pharmacological drug that's going to counteract that. So, okay, that's, you know, the natural response is to obviously put you on an immunosuppressive type drug. And then really what should happen is all of the potential adverse reactions should be explored with the individual. So if you are um, diagnosed not just with the autoimmune disease or really with any um, diagnosis and you're automatically given a pharmacological drug, you really should explore the adverse side effects to see where you are in the realm of potential side effects. Um, and potential life-altering um, things that could happen to you because, you you know, you hear them say that one in so many could experience this and one in so many can experience that, but you need to really see what your particular risk is for developing that. Just like with you, Amethysia, you developed osteoporosis, and he thought because of your age that you were not in the high-risk category, but it turns out you were because you had family members who were predisposed to this disease. And so when you're talking about treatment, you have to make sure that you are really looking at it for you as in the school and not necessarily for what the the package insert says or, you know, what the physician says. You have to then internalize that and say, okay, what is my risk for developing these particular side effects or symptoms or things of that nature? Um, so I wanted to stress that uh, when we're talking about um, looking at treatment. Uh, my preference is like the five principles that you talked about and that you shared, uh, Amethysia, which each and every last one of them not only apply to this particular illness, but really applies to us in general when we're talking about living a holistically healthy life. So do me a favor and just can you repeat the five principles of clean body living, which is your company, one more time before we go to our last commercial break. Okay. The first one is awareness. So it's being aware of what you're putting on in and around your body and of being open to other holistic healing modalities. There's body movement, which is exercising um, to your ability. Clean eating, which I say is eating real food without toxins. And there's self-care, taking care of yourself, reducing your stress, and then reducing the environmental toxins in your life. So that's also being aware of what you're putting on in and around your body because there are toxins in body products, cleaning products, plastics. I'm sitting here with a glass water bottle, um, et cetera. So those are the five. Great. Okay, thank you. And thank you again for sharing that. And I wanted you um, in particular to... Um, just repeat those five things because I know that oftentimes when we're listening, we're really in tune to what is being said and not really um, focusing on the information being shared. So I wanted you to repeat that again so that the listeners could jot that down and really think on what it is that you're sharing and, again, how those five things apply to you and what you can do differently today, even right now. Maybe you're having lunch and you're having lunch out of, you know, a plastic container that has, BPA in it or, you know, something like that. Like she said, she's drinking out of a glass bottle. So we have to just kind of become aware um, of what we're putting into and on our bodies and the environment in which we are allowing ourselves to be exposed to. So we're going to take our very last commercial break. Um, And, of course, you know it's a physically fit commercial break. And this commercial break is being brought to you by Yeshua's House. And they are having their first annual vendor show on March the 7th from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. They're going to be showcasing vendors, having a raffle, and more. The proceeds from this event go to support Yeshua's House, too. And they promote awareness and prevention of domestic abuse. They also provide direction, support, and housing for women in transition. So we are inviting you to come out on March the 7th from 10 to 3, and it's going to be at Biz Works, which is located at 2545 Bellwood Road in North 
Chesterfield, Virginia. So that's going to bring us to this commercial break. And don't you worry, we're going to have plie squats. Yes, we're stepping it up, making you look real cute. And a plie squat is just simply you pointing your toes in the opposite direction. So your toes are going to be pointed out like you are a ballet dancer, and you're going to hold it, and it's going to feel so good because you'll feel that muscle, those hamstrings really stretching. So plie squats, we're going to do two sets of 10 plie squats, and then we'll come back on the other side of the commercial break. The Tanya Free and Friends Talk Show is happy to announce our partnership with the May We Help You Radio Network. You can now catch the rebroadcast of our Wednesday show every Thursday at 6 p.m. That's Tanya Free and Friends, the podcast, every Thursday evening at 6 p.m. We welcome your comments and opinions 24-7 at TanyaFree.com, Facebook and Twitter, or send me a text by texting the word Tanya, that's 72727. Tanya Free and Friends, and May We Help You Radio. Living life with a purpose. Are you frustrated, disappointed, discouraged with your life? Are you angry with God? What's holding you back from fulfilling your purpose? Are you struggling as a leader in ministry? Do you believe you have an end-time calling? If you answered yes to any of these questions, tune in to The Waymakers on MWHY Radio Network every other Friday at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. We are here to support you. Join us to get the answers that will prepare the way of the Lord in your life. Hi, this is Benita with Off the Vine. Join us on Fridays at 3 o'clock for fun talk about wine. This season, I'm going to put this little sommelier certification to work as we expand the conversation to talk about beer and spirits, too. Meet more exciting special guests, and you never know just who may show up at the studio. Off the Vine with Benita on the May We Help You Radio Network, giving you something to whine about. Hi, my name is Leticia M., owner of May We Help You Network. I want to thank you for joining us and enjoying our host here on MWHY Radio Network. Please visit us online at MWHYradio.com and like us on Facebook.com forward slash MWHYradio. Tune in to learn more about our host and upcoming contests and our TV programming that will be coming to you soon. MWHY Radio, bringing together business, community, and you. Hello, and welcome back to the Total Woman Wellness Show. I am your host, Delena K. Watkins, and we have been talking about Maya Cena Gravis and our special guest, is Emma Sieta, who is a certified holistic health coach, and she has shared with us her journey overcoming the illness and now her company, Clean Body Living, which represents clean living. And so she gave us five principles just before we went to break, so I'll have Emma Sieta join us back here shortly. But before I do, for six, Six five two two five one two, and press the number one if you have a question or a comment before we wrap up today's show. It has been simply informative, amazing, and of course, as always, empowering for you on your health and wellness journey. Now, the hashtag Ask the Nurse question of the day was submitted by Gretchen M. out of Illinois, 
And her question is, I'm having a difficult time eating the recommended servings of fruits and vegetables every day. What would you recommend I try doing to get in more fruits and vegetables? Well, Gretchen, my recommendation is to stop thinking that you have to just simply eat your fruits and vegetables. Think of different ways in which you can get in fruits and vegetables, whether it's in a smoothie, you know, in your salad, um, grilled, sautéed, you know, think of different ways to get in fruits and vegetables because I think what happens is oftentimes, especially if you're starting to focus on that, is we focus on how am I eating them, you know, just by the particular um, word eating. And so, Another way is you're probably consuming fruits and vegetables that you don't even realize the vegetables. So what I would do is I usually um, recommend to my clients to start with the color palette, um, and that is, you know, identify your red fruits that you like, your orange, yellow, green, uh, purple, and blue, and so on and so forth. Identify two in each of the color palettes that you enjoy that you like, and then think of different ways in which you can consume them, okay, and make it um, inviting. Mix it up so that you are, again, um, getting in your fruits and vegetables without even really realizing it. You'll end up getting more than the recommended dose of servings of fruits and vegetables. So try that. Um, Fruits and vegetables are very important. They they contain phytonutrients. They have um, cancer-fighting agents in them, especially um, in your blue and your purple fruit and vegetables. So make sure that you are consuming them. It is very important for your diet ladies um, out there, not just Gretchen, but everyone who's out there listening, make sure that you are eating a colorful diet filled with fruits and vegetables. So thank you, Gretchen, for submitting that hashtag Ask the Nurse uh, question for this week's show. Okay, without further delay, and so that I can bring Emma Sieta back on to the show as I have been just giving her a new name for this entire radio broadcast of Emma Sisha, but she's just been enjoying it and loving it. I have been enjoying her and loving her <laughs> share her story. <laughs> so tell us um, in closing just anything that you want to share about your journey and then how we can get more from you and clean body living. Thanks, Delena. And no no problem about the name. That's actually one of my <laughs> names, but um go go with Amy Seattle. Amy Seattle is what I go by now. But I just wanna uh, thank you for having me on the show. I've enjoyed uh talking, sharing my story with the listeners and I teach women with autoimmune diseases how to listen to their body and incorporate those principles, clean body living, and helping to manage and overcome uh, their disease. So you can get in touch with me. The listeners can get in touch with me on my website. It's cleanbodyliving.com, and I do have a free gift for anyone who visits the website. It's my guide, Five Ways to Make Over Your Kitchen and Reset Your Health, and I have some really great tips in there. So if you just go to my website, cleanbodyliving.com, you can uh, click click on the link there. You'll see it and uh, download your free guide. I'm also on social media at Clean Body Living on Facebook, uh, Twitter, and Instagram. So I look forward to connecting with people. If anyone wants to email me, my email is amiciatha at cleanbodyliving.com. Amiciatha is A-M-I-C-I-E. T-T-A at cleanbodyliving.com. And I'll just say one more thing. We talked about environmental toxins, and they, our skin is our largest organ, and we get a lot of toxins in through our body products. So I actually make body scrubs, natural body scrubs that are made with food and organic oils. So if anyone wants to purchase one, just click on the scrubs. You can check that out. And uh, Delena, I'll be sending you one as well. We can t- talk offline about which one you want. Oh, wonderful. Thank you. You know I love a free gift and, of course, body oil. Absolutely. <laughs> and, no um, problem. You just shared one important tip, but there I was going to ask you to share, um, you know, anything that you felt was important that, you know, the ladies out there listening can do right now, today. I know just before we went to the last commercial break, I said, you know, just kind of right now where you are, where you sit, where you stand, where you are, 
look at your environment, look at what you're doing, look look at what you're potentially eating um, if you're having your lunch, and just think about, you know, are you eating clean? Is, you know, how's your environment? You know, what are you doing to decrease um, your toxicity and to eat cleaner? So if there is one thing that you can share with us what would that be that ladies can really do right now? You know, I always, you know, want to share something that is um, within your reach. You know, when you disconnect from my radio show, I always want for there to be one thing that you can do right now, either during the show or when you disconnect from, you know, listening to my show, that you can say, okay, I can do this or I'm doing this. Right now, so is there one thing that you can think of, and you did give us something, but um, anything that you can think of that the ladies could do now that could potentially help them on their journey to, you know, kind of living cleaner and less uh, toxic? Well, I'll re- reiterate what I've said. Uh, it's listen to your body. She's your greatest teacher. Your body tells you so many things that we often ignore, like you were saying. So listening to your body, spending some quiet time and kind of really figuring out what's normal and what's not, I think we need to spend more time with ourselves and listen. If something's not right, even if your doctor says something and it doesn't sound right to you, Mm -hmm. you need to do your own investigation. So really learning to listen to your body and tapping into intuition. And then I'm sorry, I just want to give one tip, that one thing that people can do to really reduce the toxicity in their lives don't microwave plastics. That's something that yes. I preach all the time. It really mm-hmm. um, bothers me when I see people doing it because I feel like they don't know. Even if you have a BPA-free container, the, there are other toxins and plastics that will get into your food once it's heated. So don't microwave plastic. So that, that's my last tip. That people right. can do, you can do that today as you're about to eat lunch. Absolutely. And again, like you said, that is Although it may sound like, you know, an unimportant tip or something that, you know, would seem as though, what? What are you talking about? Don't. But it is. That is something that even for myself had to kind of um, embrace because I am used to doing that. You know, when you take your food into, you know, a plastic container or, you know, in years past, it was easy just to put it into the microwave and hit the, you know, the number of minutes and voila, we're done. Let's have lunch but really you should not be microwaving your food in a plastic container. I have actually decreased my microwave. So, again, it's all part of your journey. I'm not saying don't ever use a microwave or anything like that. What I'm saying is, and I'm sure what uh, Amicidia is saying as well, is really is just to look for ways to continue to decrease um, your exposure to toxins. Um, and yeah, you can use glass. It. Right, yep, and just use glass You know, if you're going to use the microwave. Well, thank you so much again for being uh, a special guest on our show today. It has been an awesome journey just from the very beginning of you starting to share your story. What started out is you driving in rural Pennsylvania, experiencing blurred double vision that led you onto a different road in your life. So that road was a road that led to somewhere different other than your destination. So I appreciate you sharing that, and I appreciate you really um, educating the listeners today about this rare autoimmune disease. And, um, you know, again, ladies, just always be aware, you know, I'm always expressing to you and really encouraging you to be present in the moment and listening to your number one teacher, and that is your body yourself. Uh, So thank you again, everyone, for joining us next week on the Total Woman Wellness Show. We are going to have Audrey Goodwin of the Goodwin Group. And uh, we're going to be talking about some different things that you can do in your business to protect your business with uh, the Goodwin Group. So join us back here next week on the Total Woman Wellness Show at 12 noon. I appreciate you all. And, again, as I said at the top of the show, help support the young girls and women in the community through our Step Up to Inspire campaign on Indiegogo. This is your host, Delena K. Watkins, and I will see you back here next week. Have a healthy week. 